course in the country has been volatile and fast changing to say the least. Despite all the accords and agreements, CPNUML now finds itself in a helpless position as Nepali Congress has taken the center stage, albeit from the back door. Even as Nepali Congress candidate Ramchandra Podel is now sure to become the country's third head of the state, CPNUML chairperson KP Sharma Oli has not given up the fight yet as he is quoted as saying that the dynamics of national politics might change come March 9. Good evening, I'm Abhuday Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Political forces who played an instrumental role in bringing these sweeping changes failed to institutionalize the achievements gained over the years as parties more interested in petty interest. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal blocks the Geneva visit of Minister for Foreign Affairs Bimala Rai Podel. Ministry says the Premier personally called to cancel the visit. The government facing significant constraints to achieve its economic growth target. Targeted 8% GDP, however, only met with 0.8% growth rate in the first three months of the fiscal year. And Nepal kick off UAE series under ICC World League 2 with a match against PNG. Nepal upbeat ahead of the tournament after impressive domestic show. The meeting of the eight-party alliance has decided to give training to its parliamentarians to vote in favor of its presidential candidate, Ramchandra Podel. The meeting held at the Prime Minister's official residence in Balotar this evening decided to center all the lawmakers of the eight-party alliance in Kathmandu until 7th of March. The eight parties decided to provide training to their federal lawmakers on 2nd of March and their province lawmakers on 3rd of March in all the seven provinces. Today's meeting also decided to form a workforce consisting a member each from the eight parties to hold discussions between parties as well as internal discussions within the parties. Nepal has witnessed a number of political upheavals in the past seven decades. Political forces who have played an instrumental role in bringing the change have however failed to institutionalize the achievements gained over the years. It would be an understatement to say that the leaders themselves have been the reason behind this sad state of affairs. The then General Secretary of CPNUML, Madhav Kumar Nepal, who had lost the Constituent Assembly elections in 2007 from Kathmandu and Rotahat, went on to become the Constituent Assembly member and subsequently the Prime Minister. After the promulgation of the Constitution in 2015, leaders Bamdev Gautam, who had lost the second Constituent Assembly elections from Bardia, and Narankaji Shrestha, who had tasted defeat from Gorkha, were nominated in the National Assembly. Likewise, a political game plan has started to rope in Janata Samazbadi Chairperson Upendra Yadav, who had lost from Saptari 2 at the November 20th general elections. To meet this end, Janata Samazbadi lawmaker Ram Sahar Yadav is being fielded as the alliance candidate for the vice president, while Chairperson Yadav has begun preparations to contest the by-elections. Parties are thus learned to resolve around the power game at any cost, undermining national interest. Political analysts feel that the trend could be detrimental to the governing system itself and as serious as a slap on the national sovereignty. The 2015 National Charter has given priority to political stability while the parties have been too occupied with political gambits to suit their own interest, which is against the spirit of the constitution itself. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has blocked the Geneva visit of Minister for Foreign Affairs Bimala Rai Baudel. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Dahal has replaced Minister Rai with his personal aide and former Minister Govinda Bandi to the Geneva visit. Minister Rai was all set to leave for Geneva to participate in the 52nd session of the Human Rights Council's meeting. Minister Rai's secretariat informed that Prime Minister Dahal personally telephoned Minister Rai directing her to cancel the trip. Prime Minister Dahal's directive has come with the formation of a new political equation as eight parties have formed a new coalition. Meanwhile, Minister Rai, during a press conference organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today, had briefed about the visit, saying that she was going to hold a meeting with United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. 
Minister Rai had also said that she was going to pitch Nepal's commitment to human rights during the council meeting. In our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces what should be done to make political parties responsible towards stability and good governance. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. The Kathmandu Valley witnessed rainfall today after four months. Prior to this, the capital had 0.4 millimeters of rainfall on 14th of October last year. The Department of Hydrology and Meteorology informed that there was rainfall in the Kathmandu Valley today due to the effects of the westerly winds. There are chances of light rain in Kathmandu and some parts of the country tomorrow. According to meteorologist Binu Maharjan, although the rainfall was possible due to the effects of the westerly winds, it will not be around for too long. There was also rainfall in Gandaki Province and Province 1 today. With the rainfall in Kathmandu Valley, the capital has been a little chilly. Farmers have expressed happiness with the rainfall that came after a long time. The pre-monsoon season is expected to start in Nepal from this Wednesday. Due to the adverse weather condition, some domestic and international flights were affected at the Trivun International Airport today. According to spokesperson of the airport, Teknath Sitola, the aircrafts of Vistara Airlines and Indigo Airlines were redirected to New Delhi due to poor visibility, while domestic aircrafts couldn't land at the airport either. Meanwhile, there has been snowfall in the high hilly and Himalayan regions of Dolka district. There has been rainfall in the lower regions of the district and snowfall in the higher regions. There were rainfall and snowfall in six districts today. Potato farmers have expressed happiness with the arrival of the snowfall. The winter rain has also given some respite to the farmers growing wheat. This was the first snowfall in the Himalayan district of Solukumbu today. The temperature in the district has plummeted with the arrival of the snowfall. There has also been rainfall in Bajura district today with the effects of the westerly winds. The government is facing significant constraints to achieve its economic growth target. Even as the government has a target of achieving 8% economic growth, there has been only 0.8% growth in the first three months of the current fiscal year, whereas there was 3% growth during the same period last year. According to the Central Bureau of Statistics, the economic growth has been affected due to the sluggishness seen in the construction and mining sectors. The construction sector has shrunk by 24%, while the mining sector has, been, has seen a decline by 29.2%. The construction sector had contributed 18% during the same period last year. The Central Bureau of Statistics has said that the construction sector has been more sluggish this time around compared to previous years, which has had an effect in the economic growth. Meanwhile, the contribution from the electricity and tourism sectors has gone up this time. As the flow of tourists in the country is higher compared to previous years, there has been a rise of 45% in the tourism sector. Meanwhile, there has been an increase of only 1.9% in production. Popular actor Paul Shaw, who was alleged of sexually abusing a minor, has been given a clean chit by Pokhara High Court. A joint bench of acting Chief Justice Dilli Raj Acharya and Justice Sridhara Kumari gave a clean chit to actor Shah, citing lack of evidence to convict the defendant. Shah's lawyer Kamala Mohan Wagle said that Paul Shah would be released from custody tomorrow. Earlier, the office of the government attorney had moved the Pokhara High Court after Nawalpur District Court had also given a clean chit to actor Shah. 
It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we had asked you, what is the reason for the delay in rehabilitation of farmers that have been affected by epidemics in livestock? 81% voted for A, absence of farmer-friendly policy, 10% voted for B, lack of awareness of insurance, and 9% voted for C, inadequate budget. And here's today's question. Why have state-owned medicine company not been able to operate on full capacity? Your options are A, poor management, B, political interference, and C, lack of resources. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international update. More than 40 migrants, including a baby, have died and dozens more have survived after their overloaded boat sank in rough seas off southern Italy. The vessel reportedly broke apart while trying to land with more than 100 people aboard near the coastal town of Crotone in the Calabria region. Many bodies have been recovered from the beach at a nearby seaside resort. Large numbers of people fleeing conflict and poverty make the crossing from Africa to Italy each year. The Coast Guard said in a statement that at the current time, 80 people have been recovered alive, including some who managed to reach the shore after sinking. It added that 43 bodies have been found along the coastline. It is unclear where this boat had traveled from, but local news agencies are reporting that those aboard were from Iran, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Somalia. The vessel sank after it crashed against rocks during rough weather. The Italian authorities have mounted a large search and rescue operation on land and at sea. According to monitoring groups, more than 20,000 people have died or gone missing at sea in the central Mediterranean since 2014. Pope Francis, who often defends the rights of migrants, has said he is praying for the dead, the missing, and those who survive. Welcome back. It's time now for the sports news. Sports news. Team Nepal are taking on Papua New Guinea tomorrow to kick off the ICC World League 2 UAE series. The Nepal vs PNG match at Dubai International Stadium is slated for 10.45 a.m. kickoff Nepal time. This will be the third meeting between the two teams, Nepal and PNG. Prior to this, Nepal had won the two meetings against PNG played in Sharjah. PNG are at the bottom in the League 2, having won only two matches out of the 28 matches they have played. Nepal, just one position ahead of PNG, have been playing well as they had clean swept the home series against formidable opponents, Namibia and Scotland. If Nepal managed to win seven out of the remaining eight matches, they can finish in the third position and qualify for the World Cup Global Qualifiers. Likewise, five wins in the remaining eight matches will ensure that Nepal save their one-day status. This would be Nepal's head coach, Monty Desai's second series. Team captain Rohit Podel had said that the performance could also depend upon the condition of the pitches in the UAE. A Supreme Court hearing on whether or not to hold cricketer Sandeep Lamichani, who is alleged of raping a minor in judicial custody, was held today. The court is yet to issue an interim order on Lamichani's application, seeking approval to travel to the United Arab Emirates for the ICC World Cricket League 2 tournament. Earlier, the Office of the Attorney General had moved the apex court against the decision of the High Court of releasing the rape-accused cricketer on a bail amount of 2 million rupees. The Supreme Court is now only likely to deliver a verdict in the two writs tomorrow. Lamichani was included in the national team after his suspension was lifted following his release. He then played for Nepal against Scotland and Namibia in the home series of the World Cricket League 2 tournament. The UAE leg of the tournament begins tomorrow, where Nepal will play Papua New Guinea and the host UAE. Nepal began their tournament with a clash against PNG tomorrow. Australia clinched the ICC Women's T20 World Cup with a convincing 19-run victory over South Africa in the final plate earlier this evening. 
electing to bat first in Cape Town, Australia posted a challenging total of 156 runs for the loss of six wickets. Beth Mooney top scored for Australia with 74 runs. In reply, South Africa were restricted to 137 runs for six wickets. Laura Wulvadart top scored for South Africa with 61 runs. It's time now for the weather update. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.